In this video, we're going to talk about building standalone applications for the Mac, Windows, and Linux. All we need to do is open up our build settings. And this is where we would choose our target platform, Windows, Mac, or Linux. And this is where we would choose our architecture. So let's start with Windows. We have two possible choices for architecture, x86-64 or x86, which will be 32-bit. So let's just stick with x86. And now we need to add our scenes that we want to build. We have our main scene, which we could just drag in here. If we had multiple scenes, we would have to drag in multiple scenes. And we can also just click Add Current Scene to add our current scene. And now we can say Build. Now where do we want to build? Well, we have a Builds folder. And we're going to create a new folder for our Windows Builds. And we will say Create. And we'll name this Coconut Hut. I'm not going to put spaces in the game name. You could if you want. Save. Unity will figure out what it needs to do for this platform and it'll build the player. Here we go. And for a small game like this, this doesn't take very long. If you had a large game with lots of scenes, you could expect this to take quite a bit longer. So there we have the Windows build. Notice it's in two parts, the executable and the data folder. Let's switch back to Unity. Let's pick Linux. And now we have two choices. And a nice third choice, universal. Well, let's go with universal. It's always nice if we can have a universal build. And we just click build. And once again, we're going to go to our builds folder. We're going to create a new folder called Linux. And once again, we'll name our game Coconut Hut. And click save. And again, Unity is going to figure out what does it need to do for this particular platform. And then it will build the game. And now we have two Linux executables and a data folder. That's good. Back again. And now let's pick Mac OS X. Notice we only have the 32 bit. Maybe one day we'll have the 64 bit and the universal. That would be nice. But for now, we're just going to build the 32 bit. One of the other things we need to check is our player settings to determine are we building for the Mac App Store or not. You'll notice Mac App Store validation is enabled. So let's build this one for the Mac App Store. Go to Builds, create a new folder, Mac OS X. And in here, we'll create another folder, App Store. And once again, we'll name our game Coconut Hut. Now, this App Store build won't run. It has to be sold through the App Store, so I won't be able to double click this. So once we build this, we'll have to build not for the App Store. And again, Unity will figure out what it needs to do for the Mac, and it'll build. Now, notice the difference here is that with the Mac App Store, there's no app and data folder. It's using an application bundle. So if I show package contents, you can see that inside this app bundle is where you're going to find the data. That's just a small difference between the Mac and the other platforms where they have the separate executable and the data file. Back to Unity. Back to our player settings. Now we do not want the Mac App Store validation. So turn that off and build one more time. And this time we're just building for Mac OS X, not for the App Store. That's done. And now I want to show you the Options dialog. Well, first I'm going to hold down the Option key and launch it so that you can see the Options dialog with the splash image. So Option and double click. And as you see, I get this Options dialog. And here's the nice little splash image that I put in here. And I can change my settings here if I want. Or I can just quit. And now also I can just double click this without holding down the option key. And there the game runs and I can start the game and I'm in the game and I could start playing the game. Now I'm going to do the command tab just to show you the icon that appears. You'll notice I'm getting that messed up icon. So this is where you would have to go in and fix the icon. Let me just quit from the game and you would have to open the application package to show the package contents. And in here, you would find under resources, this icon, this is that messed up icon. Let me just open it. And you can see it's messed up here. So you would have to fix that icon and replace it in the application package to get the proper icon. And in addition, depending on how you wanted to deploy, you may have some code signing that you want to do. For example, if you have a Mac OS X developer ID, you would have to use the command line tools to manually code sign that executable with your developer ID. So you're going to have to learn the different ways to deploy depending on the platforms. That's kind of outside of the scope of what we're doing here. I think now we're pretty much done. So I'm going to end this video on building standalone apps for Mac, Windows, and Linux.